بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ صل علیہ سید محمد وعلی علی محمد کما صلی علیہ ابراہیم و علی علی ابراہیم ان کا حمید و مجید اوکے okay, السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو دا ویڈیو سو ٹوڈے وی ار لوکنگ ایٹ دا نیم اف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی اور دا نیم اف دا قران وچ از قول دس از ا ورڈ اف اللہ right <clears throat> and fasal which is a decisive word so you see that this is mentioned for both because it's qul al fasal meaning it is the decisive word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so basically we're going to be looking at these two ayat which is also this ayat so let's get started <clears throat> bismillahir rahmanir rahim a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem uh, indeed innahu la qawlun faslun إنه, indeed, it is لقول فصل The قول that is فصل Meaning it is decisive right? So the Quran decides perfectly, clearly It is a single word that will be decisive That is decisive um, in all matters right? But let's look at the context of this ayah Because it's a short ayah It's not difficult to understand it uh, So we see immediately prior to this ayah which the Quran is named as لَقَوْلٌ فَاسَلْ There's two oaths by Allah. He's swearing by the rain and he's swearing by the earth. Um, um, and then before that there is a whole context. Because the ayat are short, let's go to the beginning of the surah and come up to the 13th ayah. Look at how short they are so it won't take a lot of time. Allah says, by the sky and the night corner, وَأُسْسَمَاعِ وَالطَّارِكِ وَالطَّارِكِ By the sky and the night comer. Um, so he's swearing, right? By the, uh, the, uh, the, the sky and uh, Tariq, the night comer. What can make you know what is the night comer? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا أُطَّارِكَ أَطَّارِقُ um, and of course this phrase is used a lot in the Quran and وَمَا what adraka وَمَا adraka what can make you know right what can you have can make you have adrak of a hakika that is great so which is like difficult for the human being to comprehend so Allah uses this phrase ma adrak it is the piercing star unnajmu ushakib ushakib Najmu it is a it is the piercing star. So the Tariq is a Najm. Tariq, the night comer, is a star that is piercing. And remember that Allah swore by the Asma and the Tariq, and then He asks us what will make us understand what is a Tariq, and then He names the Tariq, the Hakika of it is Najmu Ushakib, a piercing star. Inna, inna kulu nafsin, there not any, uh, there is no soul, nafsin, lama, but alayhi, over it, hafid, is a protector. Now, look, it doesn't say al, al, alayha, al hafid. So, this is not a name of Allah here, and this is this a hafid, is a protector. Now, this is a small a, right? It's not the. So this is a small H here. This Hafiz isn't Allah. But this, this protector uh, is, is a protector from Allah, is a Malaika. Inna kulli nafsin lama alayhi hafid. So over every soul there is a protector. There is a protector. Now this would give us uh, confidence that Hazrat Ali radiyanhu used to say, he was asked how brave, why he was so brave. And he said, um, <clears throat> it was said, he said that Allah has put an angel to the left of me and an angel to the right of me. And when he sends death upon me, then he will remove the two angels that protect me. So why should I be scared? So, inna kulla nafsin lama alayhi hafid. There is a protector, there is a protecting angel over every nafs, meaning you over me, over each one of our nafs, and nafs also implies the body, so it's over each one of our nafs, uh, so we each have a protector, so this is the idea of a guardian angel, Hafid. Fal, yanduri. so let's see, ala insanu man mimma khulik, 
Uh, so, so let man see what he is created from. And then Allah names what he is created from. Khuliqa min ma'in dafiq. Uh, he was created from ma'in, a water, dafiq, ejected. So ejaculate, you know, a fluid that was ejected. Yakhruju min bayni. So emerging from, coming forth, yakhriju. Now this is the same word Allah uses for the bodies coming out of the grave on Judgment Day. Yakhruju. So this water is coming forth from, min bayni, from between, usulbi, uh, usulbi wa uttarabi, and the ribs. Right. So Allah is talking about the location of where it comes from. It originates from in the body. Now this is interesting because, of course, anatomically we know that this fluid is proceed, uh, uh, produced in, in the testes, in the, in the like lower down in the body than this. But there must be some truth to this and we have to understand what this is. We still, we, we have to research this and reflect on it. Maybe it's possible that the nutrients or the essential building blocks of what goes into making the fluid originates here. But we should seek to understand this better. As Muslims living in a scientific world, inna hu indeed ala rajihi to him. The indeed the return is to him la qadir, and he is able. Indeed Allah, <clears throat> indeed Allah to return him to life is able. So here he's talking about the origin of man. And this is of course talking about even before the production of the sperm or the semen in the testes. This is talking about the source of the building blocks of those cells. Uh, the, the cells. And here Allah is talking about إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَا قَدِيرٌ So Allah is able to return him to life. So immediately the, talking about the very beginnings of the origins of life for a human being. And then Allah is talking about how he is able to return him to life. Yoma tublu, and then the day when he is able to bring them to life is talking about Yoma tubla usara iru. That day the secrets will be tested, meaning they're there, there will be no more secrets. Like it won't be able, so that it will be tested whether a secret can be kept. <clears throat> the man will have no power or any help. Fama lahu, then not lahu is for him min kuwatin any from kuwatin wala nasir and not helper. So min kuwatin fama lahu, then not for him min kuwatin. So there is nothing for him from power. Min from power, min kuwatin from power. Fama for him fama lahu. So there is not for him. From power, uh, from power. So here we can imply anything in English, but in Arabic, when it's a lahu min kawatin, kuwatin, there's not for him from power. That's sufficient to say that there's not for him from power anything. So this is absolute powerlessness on the day of judgment. Wala nasir, and nor is there any helper. Meaning that, uh, <clears throat> So Allah saying you will have no power on that day, insan will have no power on that day, and he will have no nasir, there will be no one to help him. So that day you will be totally powerless, and there will be no nasir to help you. Uh, but the sky which returns rain, now Allah is swearing, he's swearing, um, and now he's talking about something new and he's swearing, Well Sama'i by the by the sky, Zati Ur which returns rain. <clears throat> and then again swearing, Wa ul ardi and the earth zati us usad usad'i. So here he's talking about the rain, uh but the, he's swearing by the sky which returns the rain, meaning it repeats raining, right? And then he's swearing by the earth which uh, cracks open and responds to the rain, you know. Then this is the ayah we were interested in. Allah says, "Innahu la qawlun faslun." Innahu la qawlun faslun. Indeed, this is a word that is fasal, that is decisive. Uh, 
وما هو بيقول هزلي وما هو بيقول هزلي um, and not it is بيقول هزلي for amusement so this this Quran is decisive now look at the uh, the lead up to it you know when Allah, this is the verse we're interested in so let's look at the lead up to it again one time so the surah begins Surah begins, Allah swearing by the night and the ta and the tariq, right? By the sky and the tariq. Wa sama'i. So this is sworn by the sky, is sworn by twice in the in this sequence of ayah at the beginning of this surah, 86. He says, Wa sama'i wa tariqi. Wa sama'i wa tariqi. Allah swears by the sky and the night comer. And what can make you understand the night comer? So one of the things he swears by, he he asks, "Wa ma adraka ma tariku?" What will make you understand what is the night comer? And then he gives the identity of tarik. It says, "Najmu ushakib." O najmu ushakib. He says it's a piercing star. O najmu ushakib. So one of the things he's sworn by. Now he asks, "What can make us understand its hakikat?" And then he names the hakikat of it. And there is no soul, but it has over the protector. Now Allah says, "Inna kulla nafsin lama alayhi hafida." Inna kull Inna kullu nafsin lama alayhi hafida. So He informs of us uh, of a reality that there is no nafs, human or jinn, which which doesn't have over it a hafida, meaning a, a protecting angel or guardian angel. So and then he says, as a result of this, kal yanduru ul insana mim khulika. Let man observe, let man see, let man reflect upon what uh, he was created from, and then he names what he was created from. Khulika min ma'in dafik. So he was created from a liquid that is ejected, ejected. So meaning an ejaculate. He's created from the ejaculate, emerging from between the backbone and the ribs. Yukhruju coming forth min baini between usalbi wa uttarabi coming forth between the from between the backbone and the ribs. Um, indeed, Allah is able to return him to life. Innahu ala rajihi laqad kadir. So indeed, Allah is able to return him to life. Uh, and then he he's talking about so look uh, he's saying he was created from a fluid ejected. And then he's uh, giving the location of the place from which it, he or uh, he was uh, the ejaculate was created. Uh, he is, a, and then Allah is swearing that he is able to return man to life who created him. Yautubula, uh, yoma tubla. Indeed, will be tisa And then he says that on that day, t secrets will be tested, meaning secrets will not be able to be kept. So they will be tested and they will fail. Famaluhu. Then not min kuwatin wala nasir, and that on that day man will have no power and he will have no helper. Um, and then Allah swears by the sky uh, which returns and the earth which cracks open. Indeed, this is the Quran, this this what we're reciting is qawlun fasal. And it is not for amusement, meaning this Quran is not for amusement. Innahuma innahum ya kidu na kaid kaid. They are planning a plan. Wa akidu kaida. But Allah is. But I am planning a plan. So allow the disbelievers. Fa fa mahili ul kafirina um hiluhum ruwaid. Uh, leave them a while. So Allah is saying, leave them a while. So allow the disbelievers and leave them a while. So basically, Allah is making clear kind of the the sequence of human beings, like their life and the afterlife. The whole sequence of their existence is being described. And then he swears, and after he describes that, he's saying that the, this is Quran is like all and fasal. It is not an amusement. And then he talks about how the kafirun are planning a plan. But Allah is also planning a plan. And then he says, فَمَحْلِ الْقَافِرِينَ So leave the kafirina, أُحْمِلُهُمْ um, Give respite to them. 
Ruud. So let them do what they're doing. Leave them. Let let them do what they're doing. Don't don't be overly concerned with them. Allah uh, will Allah will take care of them. Allah will punish them. Okay, so that's the first one that mentions Qalun Fahsal, right? Um, we looked at that for one first because it's a very strong name of the Quran. Uh, let us just really quickly also look at the ayah which mentions uh, it as Qal 2851. So here we see, and we have repeatedly conveyed to them the Quran that they might be reminded is the translation. But Allah says, "Walakad wasalna," uh, and indeed we have conveyed wasalna lahumu to them ul qawla the word laallahum so that they may yatadakkarun remember. Walakad and indeed wasalna we have conveyed lahumu to them ul qawla the word laallahum so that they may yatadakkarun remember. So indeed. We have conveyed wasalna to them. Qawla, the call. Why did Allah do that? Laallahum, so that they may yatadakkarun remember. So that they may remember. Now let's look at some of the ayah and the context. But if they do not respond to you, then know that the only follow their own desires and who is more straight than the one who follows his desire without guidance from Allah. Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So Allah is saying, Fa illam. فَإِلَّمْ But if they do not يَسْتَجِيبُ Respond لَكَ To you فَأُعْلَمْ Then know أَنَّمَا That only يَتَّابِعُونَ They follow أَحْوَاءَهُمْ Their desires وَمَنْ أَذَلُّ And who is more astray مِمَّانِ The one who أُتَّبَعَ Follows هَوَاهُ His own desire بِغَيْرِ Without هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّ Hudan mina Allahi without hidayat from Allah. Inna indeed Allahu Allah la yahdi does not guide ul kauma ul a people who do dhulm. Allah does not guide such people because they are dhalimin. Allah does not guide them. Um, one ayah before, then bring a scripture from Allah which is more guiding than either of them that I may follow it if you should be truthful. Okay, so let's go one more ayah before we look at this one. <clears throat> one more. Um... So in this one, the ayah we just looked at, Allah says, uh, follow his desire with our guidance from Allah. Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So this wrongdoing people um, is kind of being referred to in the ayah before. Allah says, قُلْ فَعْتُ uh, Say, then bring بِكِتَابٍ A book مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ From Allah هُوَ أَحْدَى Which is better guiding مِنْهُمْ أُتَّبِعُوا uh, that I may follow it in kuntum sadiqin if you are truthful. Min uh, huma. <clears throat> so here it's basically saying uh falamma. So this is this is a response. Uh, that the Muslims are ordered to say to something that the Kuffar are saying. And this is what the Kuffar are saying. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ uh, But when came to them, أُلْحَقُّ The truth مِنْ إِنْدِنَا From us, قَالُوا They said, لَوْلَا Why not? أُوْتِي مِثْلَا مَا أُوْتِي Was given Musa. So when the truth came from us, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ When came to them, أُلْحَقُّ The truth مِنْ إِنْدِنَا From us, Qalu, they said, Laula, why not? Uti was given Mithla Ma'uti Musa. So why wasn't it given to him, which was like or the likeness of what was given to Musa? They're talking about the Quran. Why isn't like Musa? Meaning Musa was given the whole Torah on Mount Tur um, in the forty days. He was just given the whole thing, but the Quran is coming down piecemeal. And it was the Musa, the tablets. There he was given stone tablets. So basically, they're saying these people are saying that. Uh, this is not something, uh, this is not like what was given to Musa. Why wasn't something like what was given to Musa given? Did Aulam, did not Yakfuru, they disbelieve Bima Uti Musa. So they, they're saying this, but they already disbelieved in what Musa gave them. Min Kablu, 
min kablu uh, before so they already disbelieve in what Musa was given and why are they asking for something like what Musa was in Kalu they said Sihrani uh, they, what they're saying is Sihrani, these are two magic the Torah and the Quran are two magic Sihrani, Tadahara supporting each other وقالوا, and they said uh, Inna bikullin, um, indeed we bikullin kafirin we are in all of it kaf- kafar but when the truth came so that's basically the meaning of this ayah and then Allah is saying in response to them he's giving the hukum for us to say Qul uh, Fa'atu, then bring bi kitabin a book min indillahi, a book from Allah huwa ahda, that is better guiding min huma than both of them, attabi'uhu, so that I may follow in kuntum sadiqeen, if you are truthful. So say this to the, bring another book, if if you have a, then bring another book from Allah that has more guidance in it than the Quran or the Torah, so that I may follow it if you are the truthful people, if you're speaking the truth. So this goes on, basically this idea that the arguments put forth by the kuffar are always just delusional. Uh, you know, it's kind of the idea of like someone saying this is like a spiritual example or like an example from a different tradition. When someone says, oh, if there was someone like the caliber of a Buddha nowadays, I would go follow the Buddha. If the Buddha was alive, I would go follow the Buddha. But um, there's many people who are alive who, who are doing the same thing, who are of the same caliber. And uh, people don't actually go seek them out and treat them as they claim they would treat the Buddha. This is what's being saying. The light has come. The truth has come. And they're saying if the if the truth had not come, they would say if it came to us, we would follow it. And now that it has come, they're making other excuses. So this this kind of pattern of hypocrisy will continue forever. They, they don't, they don't, um, it's just their own hypocrisy. It has no reality. They're in delusion and they will just say different things. So Allah is demonstrating their type of dialogue in different type of circumstances. And then after that, Allah says, but this is speaking to their haqiqat. We looked at this. They, if they do not respond, they know they follow ahwa'uhum, their desire, and who is more stray mimmani than one uttaba'u follows hawahu, uh, his own desire, bi ghayri, without hudan, min Allahi, without guidance from Allah, inna Allah la yahdi. And Allah does not guide It doesn't guide people who are thalimeen. So these people are following their own desire and they, they're not guided from Allah. And the reason they're not guided is because they're thalimeen. And then this is the ayah that we were actually interested in. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ وَصَلْنَا And we have conveyed the word lahum to them. Ulkaula, the word لَأَلَّهُمْ So that they may يَتَذَكَّرُونَ uh, Remember, so Allah says this qawl, this Qur'an, uh, we have conveyed it to them so that they may remember. Anyways, that's that's all we have time to look at today. But maybe I will continue. Uh, we will look at this again in a future video. We will talk to you soon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.